Hey, how's everybody doing? It's the Chase Carter Concept Podcast for Friday, May 28th. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, let's just write, get, get, get into the episode. I need to stop blabbering, trying to fill time, and get right into it. What has been going on? Nothing much. Um, more video games. More just trying to stay in shape. Tempting to. I got, the, I, got, I got this foot problem, but that's neither here nor there. Got more feet issues. Feet, foots. Every time I put get on the tip of my toes, my it, it cracks, and then my big right toe doesn't feel right. It's not fractured, but something something got strained, and it's annoying the hell out of me. Other than that, I'm a perfect specimen. But <laughs> but uh, so yeah, just want to get into the news. There's a few things that caught my eye this week. I've been watching a lot of basketball. Um, NBA playoffs is going on. Uh, if you're not a big fan of sports, tune out for the next five, ten minutes. Um, I don't know what it is, but it, there's something that's annoying me. Something that's annoying me about sports in general. Not sports in general, but basketball. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm not too sure. It's the, man, not the proclamation, but the, um, what is it? The over exaggeratory actions of people based off of a small sample size. And that, that that's all you have to go off after, you know, one or two games. But it's just, if they, if one team loses, if this team loses, the next game is going to be over. And it's just, it just, it seems so fake and just so dramatized. And I, I understand because they're trying to, you know, have, you know, good ratings, but not every, not every, not every game and not everything is the end of the world. People say if the Clippers lose to Dallas in the first round, they should move to Seattle. And you're like, who, the players? No, the entire team. They're not. Huh? Why? Because you, a, a media um, reporter, just started covering them two weeks ago? Or t- a, two years ago because they just got Kawhi? Huh? And Paul George? Like, What? The Clippers don't want to be a laughing stock anymore, and they're not a laughing stock. They're in the playoffs consistently now. You know how hard that it is to do? do you understand? Go talk to the New York Knicks, who just won their first playoff game in eight years. You don't think they would lo- rather be the Clippers right now? Like, I don't understand. I don't get that kind of mentality. And then the results... Um, like everyone thought Trey Young was the baddest man on the planet after game one. He's like, oh, he's the new playoff villain. He's the, and then the Knicks win game two. And now it's Trey Young's balding. And is he going to rise? It's like, what? He was just the, the villain of the NBA. And now he's just after one game. Huh? It's very microwave, flash in the pan instant gratification kind of like you don't get to build your not legacy but your reputation i guess legacy and reputation are kind of the same thing but it's it's very interesting to see they're just trying to get clicks trying to get views and it's the same thing now they use um and there's a few people that i don't even bother watching anymore i don't watch um stephen a smith anymore i don't watch um rob parker because and because they do a lot of this it seems like race baiting like we're sitting here trying to enjoy basketball or sports and then they say the reason that steve nash got hired is because he's white the reason tim tebow got you know, is given an opportunity is because he's white. 
they, these were like the only t- reason that Tim Tebow, like how many black players have had second had second chances in the NFL? A fuck ton. What are you talking about? And I don't think, I don't think he really believes that. He just knows that the country is is um, looking at race more. So he knows if he says something about race, he's going to get more views about it. So it's just this, they're monetizing um, racial um, differences between, between the, the population. It's the same thing. It's one of the reasons everyone loves Muhammad Ali, and I do too. <clears throat> but there was a story about one of his fighters who was white, and Muhammad Ali asked the white guy to call him the N-word. And the, the white, I forget, I've, I've talked about this before. His last name is Wagner. I think he's the uh, Muhammad Ali fight history. I'm going to look this up so I don't sound like I'm talking out of my ass, which I do a lot. But that's besides the point. Where is this? where is the record, 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 record history? Okay. Uh, 50... The Joe Bergner? No. Joe, Joe for no. Wepler? No. Alvin Lewis? No. Joe Frazier? Um, where? Sight list. I don't know where he went. I'm going to find it. Leon Spinks, Trevor, Larry Holmes? No, not Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes is. I. Ah, Wepner. Chuck Wepner. There we go. There he is. It's uh his Muhammad Ali's forty eighth fight, and um, Chuck Wepner is a white guy. And Muhammad Ali felt, this is according to Chuck Chuck Wepner. This is coming out of his mouth in an interview. There wasn't a lot of um, attention on the fight. So Muhammad Ali told Wepner to call him the N-word because it would get it would pick up news traction. It would sell more fights. He was like, the white people, this the white people are gonna want to see you knock it, knock, you know, an N-word out. And the black people are gonna want to see oh, you know, a racist get beat up by a black guy. So we'll get everybody tuning in. And Chuck Wepner's like, I have black friends. I can't go out there and call you. What are you talking about? So Muhammad Ali saw this whole boxing thing as theater. Like, a, like it's a movie. Damn the personal repercussions. Let's make as much money as possible. So, huh? So that would cause, not only is that just immoral, but you're causing people think this is real and it's going to cause real it's going to have real life consequences so a young black kid is going to see chuck wepner a you know an adult white heavyweight boxer disrespect his hero muhammad ali call him the n word that person is going to grow up with a side eye towards white people and it's the same. It's the same kind of thing. If you're always bringing up Steve Nash got hired because he's white, uh, white privilege, Colin Kaepernick. It's like, are you do? Are you doing this for theater? Because there's no way that you can think like. So his personal relationship with Urban Meyer is com- complete, completely just pushed to the side. Not that he's a good guy to have in the locker room. And by the way, he hasn't made the team yet. He just has, he has, he's on the 74 man roster or whatever. That's going to get whittled down. So this is not, so you're, you're complaining or you're bringing light to him getting an opportunity, which is, so na- na- names, name a black player who you would like to go in t- Tim Tebow's place. Name a guy who might not make the roster. Name someone who you don't know. <laughs> like, who? Who? He's not playing quarterback. He's not playing quarterback. And the whole Colin Kaepernick thing, the whole tryout, then he switched it because if Colin Kaepernick 
would have signed the the tryout thing that had some like legal wording and that he could never sue the uh, the NFL again. And if that was in there, then yeah, Colin Kaepernick shouldn't have worked out. But if that wasn't in there, I don't. I, I looked into it for five minutes. If that wasn't in there, then Colin Kaepernick's doing something else. So I, I don't know the truth. Truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. But it's just like, what are you doing with like this these race baiting tactics in sports? And I don't know. I, I I'm trying to think because it doesn't unify people. It doesn't make me want to tune into the NBA and watch their coverage when they talk about race. I'm like, this is isn't this where race isn't supposed to matter at all? And then you can't say white privilege as far as players go in the NFL because most of the players are black. Like, are we, are we high? Are we, huh? So I don't, I don't get it. You can say like coverage of, say, um, even though most media people don't like Luka Doncic because the way he whines and complains like a little kid. Or he, he comes off as a whiny little brat. But that's like, and then if just all these, um, uh, what was it, the, the Larry Bird instance. If, oh, the media just likes him because he's white. If he was a black, he'd be just an average basketball player. I'm like, the man want what? Huh? It's just, it's just seeping in. I, I, I don't know if it's just society seeping into everything. I don't know if it's the the um, the the re, like the purpose behind it is it to drive people apart. It's definitely not to unify them. Like sports unified a segregated society before. Sports had that power. Like everyone, every racist white person in the past had had to deal with Jackie Robinson coming together, and then those young people saw that the young impressionable white people and were like, "Yeah, why can't we?" let black people play with like what look look how great look how good he is he's better than all of you so this whole superiority thing is obviously bullshit so i i don't understand like what the motivation is to to go from sports brought us together to now society is transfixed on racism, race for some reason again. And now it's dividing us into sports. I completely tuned out during the the bubble because everything was just our system is broken. Like broken? Broken. People saying that uh, black people are being hunted down in the streets. Huh? What is this doing well, first of all, that's factually inaccurate. That you, you're you're exaggerating. To for what for what purpose? I don't. I, I, I don't understand. It's just there are bad people out there, and when we catch bad people doing bad things, we should arrest them, right? And then if they get off somehow, we should figure out the loopholes that they used to get off, and then close those loopholes. I don't understand, but no one pays attention to like the the legal minutia of rewording laws and bills. They see something and they're like, "That's terrible. You need to go to jail." Blah blah, blah. and then that's it. It's like, well, no, no, no. Like, let's look at the laws of the land that allow that to happen, and then go after the laws of the land. I just don't. I don't get it. That's a long-winded answer. I'm just trying to think about people saying these things and then the nba um let's talk about race for 10 minutes again geez um it's just like basketball it's ruining basketball and that like when i was watching um i'm gonna go on so i'm gonna say I, i'm gonna stop talking about it and i keep doing it i was watching tnt a while ago and they were and they were talking about race and kenny smith said a black person can't be racist because racism implies power you have to have power over another person and then I looked up the definition of racism because maybe I'm wrong. You know? Maybe I'm 
incorrect here. I don't know how to spell racism. Radical definition, radicalism, not radicalism. See, I don't know. Would you like to talk about equality? Definition of racism. A person who believes in racism. The doctrine that one's own racial group is superior or that a particular race of uh, group of people is inferior to others. Well, yes, yeah, superior, yes. Adjective. Of or like racism or, you know, racist or racism. Has nothing to do with power. Absolutely nothing. You can be a poor white person and still be right. Have no power over LeBron James. So if a poor white person calls LeBron James a racist slur or a slur, let's not even bring it, it calls him a slur. Is that, is that not racism? That poor white person has no power over LeBron James. No, 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 no. It's if you think you're superior than the other person. That's racism. Just how if, if, if when people look at me when I go play basketball, they don't assume I can do much. Why? Because the color of my skin. Is that a form of racism? Yeah. Is it a big deal? No. So let's stop back. Everyone can be racist. Okay? Not You don't have to have power over somebody else. That's another word that I don't know because I didn't even know how to spell racist. Racist, for some reason. I thought there were way more letters in racist. And no one should even listen to me because I, I don't know how to spell a word that I'm looking up. I'm like, where's the little um, mic button where I can press and then say the word? I know how to say it. I definitely don't know how to spell. I do math a little bit better, though. There's just all this stuff. And, and I'm wondering, like, if, if we don't allow it, if we just ignore it and go, yeah, when they say yeah, America's racism. Racist. All people are inherently racist. I was like, we, if we just ignore these idiots and say no, they'll go away and be, and they'll concentrate on something else. It's like, no, we're not. The majority of us are not like that. And then you just, you just yeah, you, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now I'm thinking about race more than I, I've ever thought about in my life. Instead of just, hey, is this person an asshole or is this not person not an asshole? If you keep bringing it up, the kids are just going to be like, oh, shit, I got it. Oh, there's a black person. There's a Mexican. There's an Asian person. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, don't say the wrong thing. Just, okay, be quiet. It's like, what? Don't understand. And then the NBA had had issues. Someone spat on Trey Young. Spat, spat upon this man. And whoever 50 Cent, that girl that 50 Cent with, was with. 50 Cent, good for you. Um... But what I want to bring up is that I don't understand the players, the reaction in the moment of Russell Westbrook wanting to destroy the man. I understand that emotion um, completely. That's warranted. Someone dumps anything. You don't know what it is exactly. You don't know what's in the popcorn. People are like, oh, it's popcorn. It's really light. And it's not going to hurt you. And I've put a few jokes out there. And it's like, well, the last time I haven't been to a movie theater, you know, in over a year. So unless they change popcorn, man, just, you know, pick up a piece, eat it, and laugh at that idiot. That's the best way to deal with it. And then bring it up to the, you know. But if you if you have a nonchalant uh, reaction towards that, then I, I don't think the NBA takes it as serious. Because, like, yeah, it's just popcorn, they'll think. Oh, whatever. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be kicked out. He'll be, you know, maybe arrested or banned or whatever. Um, and then Trey Young... Uh, Refused to press charges on the guy who spat on him because that's a, technically assault. It's not technically assault. It is assault. Um, and then um, both fans have been, they said, in, suspended indefinitely. And people are like, oh, that's, that's, um, that's not, I want permanently. I'm like, that's what indefinite, that's what, that's what that means. I don't understand. That's what that means. And then with facial tracking, I'm guessing they can um, 
they can track you. But then I, I would wonder if he can just buy tickets to come in to the building. Because I think one of them was, um, I think the one that dumped the popcorn was a season ticket holder. So he has his season tickets removed. But I'm wondering if he can just, like if his buddy buys tickets, can he just go as a plus one? You know, not a plus one. That's a terrible. I don't think they even have that saying in the ticket business. But uh, just wondering, like, can they skirt skirt tail around that somehow, and he can get into the arena again, or is it is everyone gonna have a picture of him? Like, no, 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 seventeen thousand people. You're gonna do that to everybody, or is or maybe the cameras in the arena scans everybody, and then they could figure out exactly who um, who's who, and they're like. If this person shows up, then boom. But then, then the person can just wear sunglasses and a hat and not be recognized. Give me one second. Sorry, my 12 o'clock reminder to do the podcast. See, I'm doing it early. Doing it early. Just went off. So 21 minutes, put that back in. Okay, we're back. So I've just wondered what do the pl- the players freaked out? And then LeBron James says he, he should leave with an injury. So you dump popcorn on someone and then you want them to be physically injured? Huh? First of all, that's not like people talk about equality. That's not an equal an equal reaction. People who say that police use excessive force all the time. That's kind of excessive force, LeBron James. Person with a a knife trying to kill somebody, a cop shoots them. That's excessive force. He didn't need to do that. Someone dumps popcorn that doesn't weigh a half a pound on somebody, and you want him to be physically injured. That seems a little bit excessive. The... Equal and opposite reaction would be let Russell Westbrook pour popcorn on this kid or this idiot. Let him do that. That would be equal. But you don't want equality, do you? No. You want to rain your power down on people and stomp them into the ground until they comply with how you feel they should act. Now, the popcorn guy, arrest him. Have him spend a few nights in jail. Kick him out with a fine. Same thing with the guy who spit on him. Get him out of here. They should never be allowed back into the building. You don't want to hear it. You can, you sh- and, be, and you should be able to yell and scream whatever you want. Whatever you want. But like Heath told me to F off. He to- If they released the audio of the players talking to one another, it wouldn't be allowed on Almost any airway. It wouldn't be, it would be worse than a rated R movie. Could you imagine the racial slurs? That I, I want to, everything, everything imagine. I would love it. A rated R NBA. I want to hear what these p- players have to say, really. Because I've been on pickup court, um, I've been in pickup games, and the shit that's said to me. And it's just in the the heat of competition. It's just like, whatever, it's not a big deal. And even if someone were to say racist things to me, as they have done on multiple occasions, on more than a handful of occasions playing basketball, I would ignore it because they're stupid. But that's just my personality. Some people get triggered and, you know, retaliate. This one one guy, uh, he, he was pretty good, and I was trying to get in his head before he started, he started warming up. He started hitting a few shots, and I tried to get into his head, and I did. It was funny. Um, I told him he can't shoot, which is go to, which is classic. You can't shoot. Oh yeah, sh- and every time he would drive, he would he was destroying um, the, his defender and me. And I, I got switched out onto him a few times, and I'm like, oh, another layup, huh? You can't do anything else but drive right by me <laughs> and score a layup. Just something stupid. I was grasping at straws. And uh, <laughs> um, so we started going back and forth. It's like, you can't shoot. You, so then he tried to, if, if you tell someone you can't shoot, what are they going to do usually? 
90 percent of the time they're going to try to shoot well i wanted him to shoot i didn't want him breaking down the defense driving and kicking or scoring up on us i'm like you can't shoot you can't shoot blah 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 blah. so we get into a back and forth thing and then so uh he said something real stupid like um he's like all you he's all you can do is shoot and uh pass well i was like well that's a okay thank you that's two really important parts of basketball I'm not a good defender. It de- depends on the person I'm trying to guard. If he's slow like me, I'm a great defender. I can stick with people who are slow like me. That's about it. But uh, but th- then he brought up uh, the fact that I was racist. He was like, you racist asshole. And I was like, all I brought up is that you couldn't shoot. I was like, what? And I start, I, And instead of reacting, instead of just getting upset at him, because I was just, huh? What? That doesn't make any sense. I told you you can't shoot because you haven't shot yet. I'm trying to treat. So that makes sense, me telling you that. But you just bringing out that I'm racist. I was like, if I'm racist, I've been playing the wrong damn sport my entire life. If I wanted to get away from black people, would basketball be the sport I choose to play? No, it wouldn't. And everyone started laughing. I was like, what are you talking about? And then after the game, he was like, yeah, I was, I was grasping at straws. I was just trying to say something that would get you upset. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. Well, the, well if you're going to do that, you have to have, um, I told him, like, if, you, if you're going to do that, you have to have it make sense. I would have to say something that involves race for you to call me a racist asshole and for, for it to bother me. You can't just call somebody a racist and then there's no basis of racism. And then I'm not going to freak out. You call me, a, that's going to be the thing that gets me upset. I'm like, what? No, no, no. Don't care. If you make fun of my mom, I'm going to come back with, yeah, and then I'm going to say something even more worse about my mother. You cannot say anything in in the in competition that's going to bother me. The only thing that's going to bother me is myself, are my own doubts. If I'm at a free throw line and it's dead quiet, normally, I'm going to and then every so, I'm gonna shoot normal, and then every so often, I'm going to be like, am I going to miss this? And they're like, oh, shit, don't think that. Don't think that. That's not, you're supposed to just, so, it gets in your own head, but there's nothing you can say to work. It's going to bother somebody later. Basketball wise. But I remember um, when I was real, this can be basketball stories, Chase. When I was real little, when I was actually good, um, I was 10, something like that, playing at the local community center. And there was this big black dude. And so um, he, he was an adult. He was an adult. And so um, there was no one really to run. Um, five on five full court so they let me play just being nice and i remember um and they didn't they just saw me as a little white kid and so just to have enough and they're being like they're being nice they're being nice to me they're not you know getting you know they're not guarding me real close whatever they're letting me like dribble pass you know dribble and pass and give it to the you know the adults who can shoot and stuff like that i still remember this like it was yesterday and i took this Steph Curry, 20, 25 foot three, just pulled up just, and they, I got it. I was white. Like no one was, no one was even, I couldn't even see anybody. I still remember this. This is one, like a vivid uh, memory. And I hit the shot and I don't remember um, much after I, I, I hit the shot, but I remember hit, I remember like getting into the shooting motion and everyone's like, no, just boom, hit it. I'm like, what are you guys worried about? Do you, in my head, I'm thinking, do you know who I am? Do you know, like, I'm a 10-year-old kid. That's no business in this game at all. If they wanted to play actual defense, I would get destroyed. But I was like, this is an open jump shot. This is a good shot for me. And I'm 10 right now. And I'm 10. And I remember, like, like heaving the ball. Like, I had to, like, get heave it up there. You're like, it's a two. Oh. Well, we counted. We ones and twos. But it was a three-pointer. Very proud of that. It was one of the moments where I was like, oh, I can play with, I'm good at this. I'm good at this game. I'm good. Um, but then after that, after the game, the real big black, it's kind of huge. Um, he wanted, he knew I can shoot and he wanted to get into a free throw competition. We were shooting. Um, he was shooting. I was like, I shoot and make it, shoot, make it, shoot, whatever. It was like first one to mid, And it went on for a while. And I remember like just talking shit to him. Just, oh, you can't, you whatever, blah, blah, blah. You can't, look, you can't do, you, you can beat me one-on-one because I'm little. You're, and he's like, and you're lucky that I'm little because if I was your size, I would destroy you. 
go stand destroy you and he's like oh who's this little kid and i'd hit a free throw and he's like okay little kid okay well so we just we just went on for so long and that's all i could do back then is the, the basic fundamentals so free throws got it no problem when i was little and so now now it's an issue for some reason um but i remember i can't remember who won or who lost the free throw competition i'll just say i lost the free throw competition just to give that random guy credit just to you know because I'm, I'm a nice guy i'm a nice guy and uh <laughs> i'm pretty sure i won and so after my brother comes up to me lenny goes what are you what were you doing i was like what i'm you know just playing i thought this guy was like my friend i was like oh i'm just talking crap with my friend it's like that guy just got out of jail and you're ta- was like you he's like you have to be more careful like but the guy was joking and laughing with me and the, that's when it was like, oh, crap, I don't know these people. But I wasn't saying anything. I wasn't. I was 10 years old. I wasn't cussing at the time. I was just talking basketball shit. But it's this weird, uh, like, safety. It's like, like, on the court, you can say whatever you want, and it's safe. But then nothing has led to anything off the court. So I'm just, and so people are like, oh, we'll see you after, you after the game. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm talking shit to you because we're playing basketball. This isn't personal. I didn't disrespect your mother or your family. I'm disrespecting you and your ability to shoot or not to shoot. So why are we going to meet up in the parking lot? That's, we're not, I'm, I'm not an MMA fighter. I'm not going to fight you. If I wanted to fight people, I would go to, you know, a boxing class or an MMA class. So we're, we're all we're all here playing basketball. Oh, okay, playing basketball. Cool. I didn't disrespect you personally. Anything goes on? I'm just talking about your game. Okay, cool. Talking about how slow you are or how weird you look. You know, stuff like that. Weird you look playing basketball. But I don't understand what the uh, the NBA players LeBron James is calling for this man to be injured. And then besides banning the fans, what can you do? Do you want the fans not to be near the court? Okay. So the fans are not as near the court. So those tickets are not going to go for as much money. So are you okay with the paycheck? With a pay cut from your paycheck? Oh, you're not? You want the owners to probably eat that money, don't you? Okay. So you're selfish and only look out for yourselves. Okay, got it. Good. The fans should... The fans should sit there where they're at and say whatever they want. If they throw anything, kick them out permanently. This is not the WWE, you know, the WWF in the 90s where they wanted you to interact with the people. Remember, I remember Macho Man, oh, what was he? He was doing an interview. He's like, the worst thing, he's like, when I go out there, he's like, I don't care if you cheer me or boo me, but do one or the other. Or, you know, do either one. The worst thing is to go out there and everyone's quiet. And he's like, he's like, even throw it. He's like, I don't even care if you throw a beer at me. I might pick it up and take a sip. He said, and so that mentality, but that mentality isn't basketball. Basketball, like the entertainment is the, um, they're not trying to rile you up, so to speak. Some players are, I mean, Trey Young is looking at the Knicks crowd and cursing at him and saying, it's real fucking quiet in here. It's real. And it's like, Oh, so, but then that's fine. But if they curse at you, it's, there's a problem. Oh, okay. So this is a one way, one way street. I didn't know, I didn't know we were in downtown San Diego. I didn't know we were down there. It's a one way street. Okay. It's fine. Just the hypocrisy of some of the professional athletes. It's, I want to be able to do whatever I want to do. And the people who pay to come see me, the reason I have a job is because of fans. It's not the other way around. The only reason they have a job is because of fans. People love to watch you play basketball. That's the reason. And so for you to say what they can or can't do, obviously other than physically assaulting you, is ridiculous. And yet it's supposed to be a wholesome family thing, and you don't want some drunk idiot saying the F word a whole bunch. But I don't know. I, I, I... See, that, that's, what, that's where I get torn. Because if I have kids, do I want the entire audience screaming, fuck you, fuck you. But the crowd is going to get tired eventually. And not, I've, I've been to enough 
um, sporting events to realize the the wave dies, barely gets going and dies down real quick. Unless there's something like big on the line. If it's a playoff game, then they're a little more excited. But it's crazy. But you can't expect, you can't have an NBA player taunting the fans, screaming out into the abyss of fans, curse words, and then expect them not to curse back at you. Because remember, you're in their, you're in, you're basically in their, in on their court. The the fan, the the team, they're not, it's not their court. They don't own it. Um, it's not the Green Bay Packers, but you're on their team's court, and you just beat them, and then you're cursing at them to shut up, basically. And then you get mad because they, they curse. Like what? Huh? And Russell Westbrook is getting into all of these altercations. And I wonder if it's because he's dealt with a few that weren't. The, remember the one where he's, there's a guy just filming him and he slapped the, he was in the, the fan was in his own space and in, he wasn't leaning over or anything. The fan was just standing up in his chair, just filming Russell Westbrook and Russell Westbrook slapped the, the phone out of his hand and said, get that phone out of my face. It's like, dude, it wasn't in your face. You have to walk by him to get to the locker room. And then you physically assaulted him. So should he press charges against you? No, he shouldn't. So which one is it? Do you want the fans to be able to have access to the players to be close so they can pay high premium dollars for those tickets? Because if you're not that close to the action, you're not going to get, you're not going to pay as much. Not, people aren't going to pay consistently anyway. Like the whole one of the reasons to go to the NBA game and to get those courtside tickets is because how close everything is. You feel like you're right there because you are right there. And then as it's funny, as you go further away from the court, the ticket prices drop. I wonder why that is. Like, what are you talking about? You can't move the first row back six rows and then expect um, the ticket prices to be the exact same. It's, it's confusing. Kick the fans out. It's a long-winded response. Kick the fans out. Arrest them if the players want to press charges. But these professional athletes, they can't. If Russell Westbrook pressed charges or Trey Young pressed charges, it would be a bad look. Like you're going to – it'd be a bad look. Just in sense. Technically, yes, they should. I don't know about the popcorn. If you, can, if you dump popcorn on somebody, that's technically assault. I don't know. Spitting, I know, is. Um, let's see here. There's, I don't want to do that. There's a, there's another it, weird article from fizz.org. It says people of color more exposed to heat island, heat islands study finds. And what this article mentions is that within, um, really dense cities, um, everything is concrete. So the, the heat can't escape the concrete. So there's, I guess, heat pockets, what they call heat islands. So I guess if you take a picture or if you um, measure the temperature of a, a large area, um, you'll see what they call heat islands or heat pockets. And they say in the heated areas, there's more people of color and that it's racist that the people in there are... Um, majority black so that I even the, so I'm, I'm trying to I try to wrap my head around it but I I, I I couldn't and I don't want to talk about race anymore because I already brought it up been talking about it for the past 20 minutes anyway I complain about the NBA injecting race into its product and then I talk about it for 30 straight minutes but my whole point is to you know forget about it and maybe I will maybe I won't even bring up race at all anymore possibly on the tip oh excuse me unattainable goal but then am i ignoring the problem <laughs> there's this cool article in um science news for students.org uh europe's ancient humans often hooked up with neanderthals neanderthals there's no th in there um by about 5th, 45 can you imagine forty five thousand years ago about 40, 45 thousand years ago the two species had interbred fairly often 
No, duh. When early humans arrived in Europe around 45,000 years ago, they found Neanderthals already there. So they took the humans. We're all, we, we took the Neanderthals land. We have to have reparations for Neanderthals. We, we got to find them. The ans- we have to give the ancestors of Neanderthals all of, all of our goods. Oh, so, so it doesn't matter what species you are. You've been, they've been taking land for it. Oh, okay, cool. Got it. Um, when early humans, sorry, sorry. And so <laughs> when early humans arrived, what? I thought the cat was by my foot. I'm about to, I'm about to cuddle him. Um, they found Neanderthals already there. So they hooked up with him. Um, those hookups between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals happen more often than sciences had been assumed or had assumed. Um, that's been the conclusion of two new studies. Scientists analyzed ancient DNA from a tooth and two bone fragments because teeth are not bone. The difference. My girlfriend, the dental hygienist, always reminds me. Yeah, teeth are bone. They, they're, they're similar. Um, I got to scrape all the animal, an animal. I'm an animal. They were the remains of three people unearthed in the Bacho Cairo cave in Bulgaria. The bone bits had been, uh, radiocarbon dated. This process can determine the age of once living tissues. Yeah, but only within so many, I think it's like 50,000 years or something like that. The bone, because after that, after 50,000 years, the, uh, what was it? It releases carbon. The carbon count of something is finite. And then after time, something comes off. I can't remember. This is going to sound really dumb. But something comes off um, a molecule or an atom or something deteriorates and is let off. So then that's l- it's left with less um, atoms or whatever. There's something that it decays. So we can tell how quickly it's decaying. And we would tell the age by that, but it's only up until a certain point. And then after that, it's a best guess, I believe. It's not, it wouldn't hold up in court, so to speak, I, I think, was what I watched um, some scientists, archaeologists talk about. Stone tools typical of the Stone Age humans were found at the same soil as the fossils. With DNA inside the bone remains, scientists showed that Neanderthals contributed about 3 to 4% of humans DNA. All of the Bacho Cairo individuals had recent Neanderthal ancestors as few as five or seven generations back in their family tree. Well, how often, how old was the average lifespan of a Neanderthal? It's very important to know, I would think. Um, she, I'm playing Jurassic Park Evolution. And I love dinosaurs. I love it. I can't get any, I can't get more. I'm going to be sad when the game's over which I'm pretty close. I'm on the last island. Five stars. Uh, she is an evolutionary geneticist. That's someone That's someone who studies DNA to learn about human evolution. She works at the Francis blah, blah, blah Institute. A second study shows further evidence of ancient interbreed. Yeah, we have, human beings have sex with everything. Everything. Everything we can get our hands on. Huh? Um, I'm surprised there's not like a human dog or human-sheep hybrid. Uh, scientists turned up uh, a nearly complete human skull in 1950. They found it in a cave in what's now the Czech Republic. New analysis of its DNA show it came from a female. Um, her DNA suggests uh, she also lived around 45,000 years ago, and about 2% of her genes come from Neanderthals. Kind of cool. So just basically, yeah, human being, hey, everybody, you know that we already know that human beings fucked everything. Just so you know, we found studies that they fucked something else that we didn't know. Okay, cool. More fossil news. I love fossil news. Um, Fossils discovered in Australia outback likely to be from species of dinosaur previously unknown to science. Well, everything's previously unknown to science until it's known. On Tuesday, a team of Australian paleontologists discovered in the remains of what they suspect to be a brand new species of herbivore dinosaurs buried in western Queen- Queensland. I was going to say Greensland. I can't read very good. I apologize. 
The paleontologists estimated that the remains of a 95 million years old, that the remains are 95 million years old, which dates to the Cretaceous period. How do you do how, how do you know it? How do you know it's that old? How do you how do you know? Can't remember. Most things found in Australia in terms of dinosaurs have a very good chance of being new to science because of the nature of how they've been separated from the Gondwana, Gondwana and South um, and South America for so long. Gondwana. Gondwana? I don't know what that is. Um, Gondwana is an ancient supercontinent. Oh, I've a ancient supercontinent that comprised present day India, Africa, um, Australia, Antarctica, Madagascar, and Arabia. Arabia not. God, I want to watch the new Aladdin, the live action Aladdin besides Jasmine. <laughs> um, you can't stop taking, hey, Disney, stop taking. I know you want to basically make, you want to double dip. You want to make an you made an animated movie everybody loves. Are you going to make a live action Toy Story? Stop it! Stop it! It's very interesting. It's most probably going to be the nation's youngest dinosaur. Ooh, the youngest one. Um, the remains that have been discovered uh, that have been discovered, re recovered. Chase, learn how to read. I think I read too fast. I think I blow by it. Um, the remains have been recovered for um, have been recovered so far. Primarily consist of vertebrae of, um, and bone the bony exponents of the components of the spine. We we know what we know what vertebrae is. At least I do. Um, however, McKenzie's team is optimistic about their chances of finding additional sections of the skeleton because they have only dug a meter, about three point three feet. We a meter. We know how that is uh, down so far. Completing the dig could take three to five years. That's a big, is that, a, is that the bone? That can't be the bone. French paleontologist studies and finds discovered in 19, 2019, the Australian outback. Jesus. There's this big old bone. It's about as big as his, oh, can you imagine? This, this guy is digging out this fossil. Looks like a giant dog bone, basically. And the dog and the bone, the dog bone, is as big as he is, and it's just one bone. I could, could you just imagine the the terror of a skyscraper animal? That's a giraffe. That's bigger than a giraffe. It's like an elephant, but it's two times the size of a giraffe and can eat you. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't want to shop there. This is a this is an interest. This is kind of funny to me anyway. See why why is it like that? I don't understand why it's like that. Parents, this is from uh, CNN.com. Parents, students angered after 80 yearbook photos of female students are altered to mask cleavage. Um, flipping open a yearbook for the first time is normally a moment of excitement, but at one Florida high school, some students were left in shock after seeing that their yearbook portrait had been edited. When the high school um, freshman, I'm not going to say her name, saw her yearbook photo, she noticed that the black bar was added to cover her breasts. Um, were you naked? No, she wasn't naked. <laughs> were you naked? Then she it should cover your breasts. No, but it's, just, it's a small little, sure, she adds, this young girl's got some chesticles, and they covered them up. But I wonder what the issue, like, shouldn't it be the other way around? Since these are underage girls, first of all, it's it's weird that they're, they're posting pictures of underage girls online for a news article, just in general. But without posting the pictures, you couldn't... Um, you couldn't what? Um, without posting the pictures in the article, so you're posting un you're posting yearbook photos of underage girls to sell an article, basically, because every article has advertising to sell on it. So all an article is is to report news is to report a news i not to report news, but to report a news item that's worthy of getting clicks so then you can sell advertising on the side of it. So it's not information, it's 
basically news is entertainment now. So it doesn't make any sense. But why are you posting pictures of underage girls? And then the the one with cleavage. So I'm, I'm looking at a underage girl here picture with cleavage and then one without. Now her, her jacket, her coat jacket, I like. Okay. It's like a little bit grandma-ish. It's kind of heavy, heavy, like not heavy, but heavy medium um, kind of material. It's kind of nice. It's a nice little jacket. But I don't understand. See, this underage girl's face is blurred out. And then this girl, I, there's not even the her shirt. She's wearing this uh, like flannel shirt with this neck. She looked very punkish, very, very punkish necklace. And you can't even see cleavage. You just see her her uh, like skin on her chest. And the picture doesn't even go down enough to see cleavage. But then they copied and pasted part of her shirt over <laughs> to where it's not even like. It's not even a real shirt looking. The the top girl, it it looks like a real shirt, possibly. But this is just a terrible Photoshop job. And it's just very interesting that this is a new it could be a news article, but then without the pictures, could would it be worthy of getting clicks? That's why I don't know. And apparently they did this to a whole bunch a whole bunch of uh underage group. But then I don't understand the point. So these underage girls have pictures that show cleavage. So the school, it's like the yearbook is owned by the school, right? So if, is the issue that the school didn't tell them they were doing this? Did the school say, hey, girls, no cleavage? Was cleavage an issue? Were you, underage girls walking around, you know, with their titties out? I don't know. I remember being in high school and there were some girls that, were unbelievably gifted. Unbelievable. Is that a distraction for the other students? Yes. Now, is, is, is it a distraction for the staff? That could be a problem. You don't want that. So instead of getting rid of those weirdos, they get rid of the, the temptation? That doesn't make any sense. It's like Catholic priests getting rid of the kids. Like, no, we can't have any kids. Why? They're too tempting. We can't. No, just stop being a sick pervert. Get rid of the sick perverts. I still remember in my high school, we found, um, this is a crazy story. This, this is, I, this is, this is, this is, people, people ask me, what's your, do you regret anything in life? This is my one regret. And I'll finish on this because this is a, a doozy of a story to say the least. My high school, before I came down to Southern California, um, I, I was not a good student, didn't care, didn't care at all, pretty much about anything. Um, uh, I was, I flunked PE because I didn't want to put on the PE uniform. I would participate in my own gym clothes. And I knew I was going to get, so I didn't, I was like, I, I don't care. Just uh, anyone telling me what to do, I would just rebel against. Unless it was my dad, because I was a I was afraid of my father. I, I listened to him. <laughs> I was like, you want me to do what? Okay, fine. Yes, grandmother. Yes, dad. Yes, yes. My mom told me something, completely ignored her. She was a softie. So I, 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 looking back, I needed more structure in life, obviously, at that moment. And so, um, but we were all hanging out after school, around school. And there was the, and it was this area, um, where you would leave like the main school area and then you would cross this kind of field and to go into the, this baseball f field area. And then it was land, not a baseball field. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember if there's a baseball field, but there was like some like not gymnastic bars, something on the side of the, the school. And then there was a field that people walk through to get picked up. Um, it was a, it was a way out of the school grounds or whatever the kids used to take. And they had all these, um, containers for sports all the sports equipment used to go in there whatever it's like these old train cars that they repurpose for storage units basically and so they're and they're all locked the, all the ones that you can um access to on the ground were locked and so i i like to climb things right there's like gymnastic bars over there you, that you can um they had i remember they had the crash pads and you can climb up on them and jump off and just have fun so I go up on top of the train cart and there's like a hat. There's multiple hatches 
on top to get down into the train car. It was like two or three of them. And I try them all and they're all locked, except for one. I open one up and this is what, oh man, I should have, I should have kept my mouth shut. I should have done this like sting operation. I should have called the news. I was like, hey, I got a great story. I open up the train car and there's this little, you can obviously you can drop down in. There's this little seat you can sit in and you're completely enclosed and you can close the girl's panties all over the wall, hung up all over the wall, covered. There's porn magazines. There was no pictures of any girls that I can see, underage girls, but I'm assuming all of the, all of that underwear was, or was underwear from girls in the high school. I'm, I'm assuming. And I'm talking everywhere. And I didn't realize what I was in until I was sitting down in it. And I was like, I just felt so gross. I was like, oh, dude, someone's been jerking off here forever, apparently, as long as this has been here. And then I'm thinking, is this like, is this a student? Is this some weird creeper? Is this a teacher? What is going on? But that completely leaves my mind. And I, then I see these porn magazines. And then we all, we, um, I throw them out um, of, of that area or whatever. And then there's like, you know, five, six, seven kids in that area. We're all, I'm making jokes. We're all blah, 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 porn, blah, blah. we didn't think anything of it, anything of it. We put the porn magazines like under the train cart. And then I remember they did a, um, what was it? A, uh, it was like a year later or months later, they did this like clean up the school, you know, thing where all, all, all the classes, you know, went around and picked up trash. And I heard that people found the porn magazines underneath. And I was like, I laughed. Ha 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 ha. And then a few months later, the tra- like all that area was gone and the train car was gone. Everything was gone. It just got wiped away. So I'm just wondering what happened? What exactly ha- did they find that? Did adults find what that was? And then just get rid of it, or did they do an investigation and find out who was involved? All the teachers stayed there, so I was like, oh, "Who?" I was, I was trying to remember who was there at the time and who wasn't there after. And I was like, "Oh, everyone's here." So either they found the person, then just, or just found that and just wanted to get it away before you know they got sued or whatever. But I still remember I, I wasn't bothered by it. I wasn't traumatized. But I just I remember sitting in that area. I'm like, oh, this is like a creeper's den, jerk off den. This is weird. This is. And then my stupid teenage brain was just like, hey, I'm going to make my friends laugh for a second. And then that was it. I should have not said anything. I was like, no, it's just more sports stuff. Closed it and then done a sting operation. Find out with my friend, hang out with my friends at night. Don't tell them what exactly is going on and just watch that train car and find out who sneaks in there and then blackmail that person. That's what I should have done. Oh, if it was a teacher that oh blackmailed, perfect. Find out if some hot female teacher doing that. You know it's not. You know it's not. You know it's not a female teacher. Some weird, creepy, probably PE coach. Ugh, disgusting. But yeah, that was, that was that was a crazy, that was probably the only crazy thing that I ever experienced. I don't think I really told anybody that story. Does that mean I'm trying to suppress it? No, it's just not that. It was erased. It was gone. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Anyways, that's been another episode of the Chase Carter Concept Podcast. Again, if you listened, I appreciate it. Um, I'm getting on an average of five or six listeners. I appreciate my mom listening that many times. Thank you, Mom. I love you. And uh, I'll talk to you next week. Big addition, I can go.